Hey guys and ladies, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have an early impression video on a very expensive indie fragrance uh, that is kind of a niche of a niche, if you will. Uh, it's a specific type of oud called Kinam oud, and this is from Ensar oud, and the name is Jungle Kinam. Jungle Kinam, and I have to give a special thank you to Nissan in uh, Canada for sending this, this to me, and I've been sitting on this for a while. This is one I've been dying to talk about. I have worn it to bed once before wearing it today as my scent of the day. It's four o'clock in the afternoon, and I applied it when I started work this morning, which was about eight o'clock, uh, so I've had it on all day, <laughs> and I want to give you guys my thoughts on it because these are the type of fragrances that I want to talk about on the channel. I know I'll probably never have a bottle. I mean, I would like to have a bottle, but bottles range from six, seven, eight hundred, nine hundred. There's some bottles on Ensar's website for twenty-five hundred dollars. I mean, they're extremely pricey and expensive fragrances. Uh, and so I want to talk about this. I want to put my thoughts out there since I probably will never own a bottle. Uh, and this is an interesting one for me because you have to remember my uh, experience and my love is with vintage fragrances. It's with the old stuff. It's with uh, Koros and Antaeus and Boss Number no. 1 and MCM Success and all that stuff that I love back in the day. Paco Rabanne Pour Homme, Lagerfeld Cologne, the stuff that I talk about on the channel all the time. Many of those are made by, um, you know, even though they are the big houses, I feel like things were different back then. And so I can easily express what I'm smelling and I can talk about variations and differences and uh, the way a fragrance uh, develops and, and all of that stuff. It's, it's like it's one world, right? This is a completely different world. And I've shown off some of my um, real oud fragrances before. This made my top pickups of 2022. Russian oud. I'm so blessed to have a bottle of this. This is from a friend in the YouTube, in the, in the fragrance community. Um, and he was very fair to me with that. You know, because God knows what a bottle like that would go for if they wanted to, you know get greedy with it, but, um, you know, and, and of course I've talked about my Bortnikovs, which I have many Bortnikovs. I love Dmitry Bortnikov style, stuff like Oud Maximus, Mysterious Oud, Lao Oud. They're, they're some of my favorite Oud fragrances. And, um, you know, it's, but it's a completely different world. It's a, it's a completely different experience. It is out of my wheelhouse. It's not the stuff that I'm used to talking about. I enjoy it, but every time I wear a real oud fragrance, I always feel like I'm entering a different realm. You know, like it's um, like I'm the master of the vintage realm, and I completely, uh, I'm I am completely at home and comfortable. When I wear Boss Number no. One, I feel like it was made for me. When I wear Koros, I feel like it was made for me. When I wear some of these oud fragrances, I feel like I'm entering a realm. Uh, where someone else is king, you know, that's just what it feels like to me. It feels like a completely different, like I'm passing through some membrane and entering a different world. Oud is a totally different species, especially real oud to me. It is, um, it, it, it's something that I love. I love that it does something completely different and I love that it challenges you and, you know, you guys know I love animalic fragrances, so animalic ouds do not bother me. I have a very high penchant for animalics. Uh, but this fragrance is a little bit different because it's kinam, and we're going to talk a little bit about what kinam oud means, what it is. But first, I want to tell you a little bit about the fragrance. So when you first spray this fragrance, this fragrance did something that um, I really enjoyed because it did something that no other fragrance ever did so far. It gave me a memory, a picture, an image. Uh, when I first sprayed this and I first smelled it, five, ten seconds into the fragrance starting to dry down on my hand. By the way, this is a, uh, you know, eight hour dry down. Um, and this is about a four hour dry down, I think. Three or four, it's, it's, it's much newer. Um, but when you first spray... This opens up with the sharpness of a neat 
uh, sip of scotch. Okay. So imagine, uh, I don't know if, uh, you had, you know, uh, your, your old man or your mother or something allowed you to take your very first sip of scotch when you were like, uh, you know, 12, 13 year old boy or girl. And, you know, you, uh, are, are interested cause you want to taste it. And then you, and then you take that first sip of scotch and that warmth goes down your throat. Right. Uh, and you get that, that alcohol sting and you're like, Oh, what in the world? You get grownups drink that and you give it back to them all disgusted. You know, that was me at 12 years old. The first time my old man let me take a sip of neat scotch. Uh, it's different if it's mixed with something, but just neat scotch, a big sip. Oh my God. You'll never forget that as a, as a teenager, right? That's what this originally smelled like the very first time I smelled it. Um, and there's this sensation, there's a touch of, an, of oud, okay? Um, it feels woody, slightly has that paint thinner effect I've talked about before, but not overly barnyard, and that's a feature of Kenam. We'll talk a little bit about that as well. Um, but there is a lot of depth here. So the name Jungle Kenam, interestingly enough, um, let me read you the note listing. Lavender leaf. Not lavender, but lavender leaf, uh, sage, broom, tea, papau oud, and Thai oud. And I'm just going to read the little blurb that Ensar Oud actually uh, wrote about this fragrance. This only came out about a year ago, 2021. Uh, and it says, lavender leaves, sage, hill high or high hill tea fields diverge beneath a rainy cloud of dot, dot, dot. And so it says, most perfumers won't ever give you that much ambergris or musk. In fact, there are colognes that contain less aromatic compounds in total that sell for more than this perfume. Forget the already uh, replete composition that makes Jungle Kinom. You get all of that plus a pure Kinom cologne to put excuse me, the final polish on this resinous jungle oud orchestra. So when DHL drops off your bottle, take a spritz for reference and then let the bottle sit for a while and watch what the Kenom does to the fragrance. And then all you need to do is get on a boat and sail to the Amazon River, then hike north northward, take, a warm, take in the warm South American humidity, cross the Caribbean, and remember the smell of a tropical island. Move onwards, a warm grassy aroma as you drive roof down through Central America, where the haystacks lay rolled up on waves of golden hills as far as the eye can see. Lavender leaf, sage, and hill high tea fields diverge beneath the rainy cloud of, Papa of Papauan Gyrinops, lush and foresty, with a, a heart note that's deep jungly green. Tiger Wood 1990 and Sumatra Zen, and again, this is where I'm completely out of my element, are just two oud oils in this EDP that you won't recognize. The dark, earthy tenor of Tiger Wood 1990 couldn't be more in contrast to the cacao-like resinous glaze of Sumatra Zen. Together with an assortment of far-out floral forest herbs, these two oud oils add a depth to the perfume you'll never experience, even in the most herbaceous standalone essential oils. In Jungle Kinam, Vietnamese woodlands meet the Scottish highlands, meet the marshy jungles of an uninhabited Indonesian island, meets a summery day in the French countryside. Like the jungle, the fragrance is dense and stays together throughout the wear. There's a lot to discover, but its dry, jungly heart barely moves from its pitch. Notes of vanilla and vetiver flourish about the green, earthy, tiger oud, oud, tiger wood, oudy mineral base notes. There's no citrus, nor rosy comfort. Jungle Kinam accompanies a deeply mellow vibe with memories of mountain hikes and road trips, forest camps, and fishing trips. So memories is the word that I kind of zoned in on there. Um, and because it did spark a memory in me. So no matter what you have to say about the price of his fragrances, uh, this one actually did move me a little bit. It reminded me of a memory I may not have thought about. Again, you know, that first skip of, sip of scotch with my old man, probably around Christmas time, like it is now. And it was cold outside, which is usually when he would 
you know, take the tiniest little glass. He wasn't a big drinker, but, um, you know, it's, uh, it, it does give you that memory association. It's a very introspective fragrance. And there are no citruses. There's no opening. It's just bam. You're right there into the into the fragrance. It jumps right into the oud almost. Uh, the oud. I do like how the oud is the central part of this, but there's no soft landing. I mean, it's just you spray. It, it's almost like you're already an hour into the composition. Bam. You're 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 ready to rock and roll. And um, this juice is very. I mean, look at the juice. Look how dark that is. That is like. Um, it's almost black, resinous, tar-like, and, um, you know, what's interesting is the, um, the sensation is, is you get a fragrance with a lot of depth, okay, that seems very deep and woody, and you really can picture the jungle. There is something about the fragrance that you get green leaves and aromatic flowers and, um, Fragrantica has yellow florals as one of the top. I don't get this yellow floral note, but there is a flower called a broom flower, like broom, B-R-O-O-M. And, um, Sylvain Delacourt's website basically says that it's a shrub with a fragrant golden yellow flower that's actually poisonous. Uh, the broom bush bush originated in Europe and has been adopted in the United States, particularly in the rural areas of the American West. It grows wild throughout Europe, but the one used in perfumery grows in Italy. Broom Absolute is extracted from the concrete by washing the flowers with volatile solvents and alcohol. Broom has diuretic properties. It can also be hallucinogenic. In perfume, it is used in floral, chipre, and oriental notes. It brings natural and rich character to perfumes. Very interesting because there is a natural richness to this fragrance. It really feels like you're smelling something in 3D is, is one of the notes that I made. Um, and the, the thing I, that's one of the things I really like about the composition is the realism. Uh, it instantly sparked a memory. I can vividly see the jungle. I can see the uh, thick green leaves from in that form this canopy almost like shading the light you know i can i can see the tree it's almost like you're hiking in the jungle and you put your hand on a tree and you realize that after you put your hand on it the bark just easily kind of falls away you know and inside of that tree there's a little bit of rot a little bit of woodiness but there's such depth it's almost like you can see the layers in the tree when you wear this um and so it feels very vibrant, you know, many fragrances have this very dull, uh, almost like, you know, almost like they uh, are incomplete, you know, and this fragrance doesn't have that. It has lots of vibrancy, lots of depth, and this 3D realism that I really have enjoyed so far. Um, and, you know, I am sure that if you talk to a big oud head, okay, uh, if you talk to someone who loves oud and who uh, is really into oud, like an oud connoisseur, they would probably say, and some of the notes that I picked up, they would probably pick up that in even more. But they would probably say that you can smell stuff like tobacco, chocolate, florals. There is a smoky vibe to the fragrance, I should say that. But it's not as heavy as the smoke in Tiger Lust, for example. Uh, the, the dark smoke here almost feels like um, resins, like tar, um, unlit tar. But it still gives it a little bit of smoky quality. Um, if you've smelled the tar resins and the pine oil in Amouage Royal Tobacco, you'll get in the ballpark of the resins and the oils I'm talking about here, but this is a completely different beast. Like I said, this is on a completely other level, completely other planet almost. Um, and so let's talk a little bit about Kinnam because, um, you know, Kinnam as a, as a definition, uh, if you don't know Oud, you, you know, you see all these names, of oud and it's not going to mean anything to you and it didn't to me for the longest time the only reason i even know this is because my experience with russian adam he sent me lots of individual oud samples so i was very lucky 
very, very lucky to get to smell pure oud oils that I know come from him and are, are trustworthy and all this stuff. But Kinam um, is uh, believed to, basically there's two schools of thought with Kinam. One school of thought is that if you have a tree, uh, an oud tree, an agar wood tree, that gets old enough, uh, the inside of the tree can create this kinam oud, okay, the heart of the tree, and it can almost like um, it can it can it can almost like um, as the as the tree ages, it can create this kinam oud, which is different from the regular. Uh, oud, even different from the sinking agar wood, which is one of the highest quality agar wood. Uh, and the other school of thought is that it's not a, a type of oud that comes from, you know, an old tree that's out in the wild, that's in the jungle, let's say, uh, that it comes from a specific type of agar wood tree. So it's its own species of tree. Kinam is its own species. And, um, there's a little bit of um there there's a little bit of disagreement in the community let's say apparently and I'm like I said I'm not as into the oud uh world and culture as some people so I'm not you know tapped into the newest arguments but um those are basically the gist of it that if a tree gets to 100 years let's say and it's given time to mature that it can create this very rare and expensive kinam oil or other people think that it's a completely, oh, it's its own species. But now what's happened is that they're starting to do plantations of kinam oud, which seemed un, it seemed like it would be impossible to do because uh, you need a tree that has a hundred years right out in the wild. But what they've done is they've taken, let's say, a limb of a tree and they go to replant it. In the plantation so they create this clone of this tree of this of this kinam producing tree on a plantation and rumor is seven to ten maybe even 12 years in they're getting extremely high quality kinam it's not as you know it may be not it may not be exactly as deep as the wild uh you know just out let's say it is out in the jungle in the middle of nowhere agar wood uh, that you that that you would find that's been around for hundred plus years, um, but it's still very high quality. And what they do is they use this GCMS testing, uh, and they test for something called agarspirol. And agarspirol is almost like a quality test of of uh, the agar wood, and that's how they test kinam. And um, so kinam has a very unique feature about it. Uh, in that most ouds have to get very hot to begin to give off their scent profile. So most ouds, you know, Indonesian, agar wood, Vietnamese, oud, whatever it may be, um, you know, it, it has to get to 150, 200, maybe even 250 degrees Celsius before you start to get uh, the full scent profile of the oud being released. With kinam, it can, it can actually release its... its um, these beautiful soft buttery notes at 90 degrees celsius which is not very high if you think of it i mean um there are uh there's saunas that easily get to 90 degrees that people just go sit in that's not a very high temperature and so it starts to give off this very soft buttery and i heard russian adam uh, talk about Kinam, and, and he has an entire video. He can explain it a lot better than me. If you're interested in learning more, I would urge you to go check out Russian Adam's video on Kinam Oud. Uh, but I heard him mention something about Kinam that really jumped out with me. I got it with this composition for sure. And he said, when I inhale very deeply, I get this uh, mintiness. And it sounds almost like uh, it sounds like you wouldn't believe it, right? Because this is an oud fragrance we're talking about. Oud, most oud accords that you think about in, you know, the barnyard ouds are not anywhere near minty. They're everything but minty. But this one, there is this almost, I called it, um, I, I made a note and said that there's almost like this Arctic air mintiness 
You ever had like um, like a York peppermint patty? And whenever you inhale, the, the um, air entering your lungs feels almost cool. That's the mintiness that you get from this agar wood. It's a very unique uh, smell. It's a very unique um, thing to imagine. If you've never smelled this and you're thinking of mint like from the garden, it won't make sense. I actually imagine it as like, imagine you take a, um, imagine you take a, a wizard with his magic wand and he turns a piece of agar wood into mint. And, and even though the wizard has powers and that agar wood has been changed into mint, it still maintains some of the agar wood DNA. That's the way that I think of the way that the mintiness smells here. Uh, because it really gives off this very soft, floral, minty, buttery, creamy, tobacco, chocolatey. It's very uh, complex as a smell and it's very addictive. Even into the late dry down, um, you know, the, the, there are slight variations in the way that the oud smells on your skin. Um, and it's, um, you know, that Arctic air blast mintiness is a great way to describe it. Imagine you're in the jungle, right? Imagine some of the things that were listed in the breakdown uh, by, by Ansar Oud. Uh, real musk in the base, real ambergris, you know, green notes from the Amazon River, and lavender leaves, uh, and this earthy feel of the Tiger Wood 1990, and that cacao resinous feel of Sumatra Zen, right? Imagine you blend all that together, but add in the Arctic Blast mintiness that I was mentioning. And that gives you an idea of the scent profile, but add it into an oud accord, but not a completely barnyard oud accord. Maybe an oud accord that you would find from someone like uh, Agar Aura, right? A little bit of oud, a little bit of funk, a little bit of that paint thinner vibe, but uh, mostly you can really pick up all of these other features of the oud. Um, grassy and green feelings with the fragrance, with the oud. Um... And it's, it's interesting. I've really enjoyed wearing this today. So let's talk about the pros and cons. So the number one pro for me is this is a very high quality composition. There's no doubt about it that Ensar Oud used extremely high quality materials here. It is not a cheap fragrance to create. There's no way. There's no way that this could be uh, mimicked on the cheap. It really does feel like you have a little bit of that amb ambergris sparkle. It also feels like there's a touch of real musk in here. Uh, everything seems extremely high quality. And, you know, this could be like a oud for someone that doesn't like barnyard ouds, which I never realized. I've heard the word kinam before, but until wearing this today, I don't think I really realized what it was supposed to do. This would be a beautiful bedtime fragrance, believe it or not, because it just... Uh, allows you to just kind of sit back and, and be with your thoughts. And you seem to always get different facets. Like if I smell this hand, the eight hour dry down, I get a little different scent profile than this one at three or four hours. There's slight little changes. You can sit and smell and just kind of let your mind wander and smell things that you wouldn't think you would pick up in a normal oud fragrance. You get them here. It's... um. You know, it's it's a very polished, very gentle, very soft, smooth, buttery oud. Very strange, actually. Uh, I don't know how I feel about it, actually, and we'll get to that in just a second. But for me, the high quality of the composition is a absolute no-brainer. Um, and there's such a wide breadth of aromas here. You know, like I said, you get florals, you get the mintiness, you get that Arctic blast. Um, you get the green notes, you get the tobacco, you get the cacao, you get the earthiness, almost like an earthy vetiver. Um, and so there's just so much to smell. And then when you add that booziness from the opening, that scotch-like warmth. So, so far I've talked about that scotch-like warmth and arctic booziness. So imagine all of these, imagine a fragrance so complex you can get scotch-like warmth 
and Arctic booziness from basically the same scent pro profile. Wouldn't seem like it would make sense, right? And in an average fragrance, it probably wouldn't. Uh, but when you're talking about Kinam Oud, I mean, I guess anything's possible. Who knows what's going on inside of those trees? Uh, it's grassy. It's ozonic. It is a little bit ozonic. Um, it, um, it, it, it even has, I will say this, it even has the slightest bit of sweetness. Not necessarily the kind of sweetness you're thinking in like a boring designer, a different type of sweetness, almost like a comforting sweetness, like the sweetness of a, you know, of a, of a good memory or seeing a family member you haven't seen in a long time. It really gives, it gives that familiarity. It's a very familiar vibe. In the, in the breakdown, they mentioned the word memories, memories of mountain hikes, memories of road trips, memories of forest camps and fishing trips. There is a little bit of that. Um, and it's 14 degrees today here in Texas, cold as hell. Uh, and, and I've been inside all day, but this has been absolutely beautiful today. Um, really enjoyed it. The, um, so now the downsides. Okay, the biggest downside for me is this, and, and Russian Adam talked a little bit about this on his video, and I completely agree with him. We are in uh, total agreement on this. If you're somebody who, like me, and Adam falls into that same category, you're always somebody that wants more, you want more animalics, more civet, more oud, more barnyard, more of the fertilizer chip smell, more uh, intensity. You want more animalics, and you want it to be more challenging. The, if if you're the if you're someone like me, where the more challenging, the better. The more civet, the more castorium, uh, the more ambergris, that kind of stuff. This fragrance may at first seem a little boring to you. Okay. That's the downside. I think that's the biggest risk with Kinam is because it, if you like your barnyards and animalics, you may smell this and say, the oud isn't dirty enough. It's not fecal enough. It's not, uh, you know, it's more soft and buttery. And actually butter whipped cream even. If you've ever had a, uh, if you've ever had a, a cake, uh, like a birthday cake, and they ask you whether you want uh, whipped or like buttercream frosting. You know how the buttercream is always a little bit more thick? The whipped is like airy, right? The buttercream has that creaminess, but it has like that denseness to it. That's what this feels like. It feels like there is a butteriness, but it's dense. It's very packed together. There's a lot to, to get, you know, there's a, to get to the center of the tightly wound ball, you really have to kind of dig and, and continue to explore. There's a lot to smell, but it's not the animalic oud that you're expecting, is the thing. It doesn't have that barnyard-like quality. It doesn't have that funk. Uh, it does, but just a little bit. It's almost like a respectful oud, if that makes sense. You know, um, I like my ouds to be like brash and drunk and, and over the top, right? I mean, hell, I, I recently got... Here, let me grab this. I'll just show you. I recently got... Um, this for 30 bucks from a friend. I got an absolute steal on this. This is Mohalet Al Shams. And this is what I'm talking about. This is an animalic, um, ambery oud. Even from the atomizer, I get more barnyard funk than in Kinam oud. And, um, the problem that I have, and the, the downside, the negative, if you will, if you look at the con side of this fragrance, if I'm going to spend $600 or $800, I don't know if I want something so uh, polite, right? I want more. I want more funk, more animalics. And even something like this gives it to me. I don't have to spend a lot of money. Uh, and I have the Oud, Oud Maximus from Arise La Dore. I'm sorry, from uh, Bortnikov. Right? I could I could just wear something like that if I want animalic oud. Even Lao Oud gives me the animalic oud I'm 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 interested in. So do I want to spend what Ensar is asking for this, which it's sold out on the website anyway, but do I want to hunt down a bottle, let's say, on the secondary market and pay double the price? No, probably not. Probably not at all. Uh and and that's been the story of my Ensar Oud experience over and over and over again. If you uh, made me pick one Ensar Oud so far, it would probably be this. 
it would probably be this Tiger Lust. This is my favorite one so far. This has that animalic funk. This is more turned up, more, the volume's higher. Uh, there's, there's the animalics here that are much more, and I enjoy that. That's more my style, right? Uh, but there's something very interesting and contemplative about this. I mean, if money was no issue, you could just buy everything, right? But since most people can't just buy everything, you have to really search and figure out what's right for you. Um, this may be the perfect oud fragrance for you. For me, testing it today, I would say this is a pass. This is a, you know, memory that I get to notch up here. I get to log the notes in my little memory bank. I get to log the experience. I can talk about it in the future. I can talk intelligently about it in the future. I've really enjoyed this wearing, but I don't think I would pursue it any further, right? Um... So that's that's my personal take on it. I would rather have something more animalic and more challenging, more rich, stronger, that kind of thing. And that was um, what Russian Adam was saying his initial impression with Kinam was. Now, he went on to say that he has since really learned to appreciate it. And I can completely see why, because there are beautiful facets to this Kinam. Um, I could totally see somebody falling in love with Kinam because it is so, it seems to be very wearable, you know, for maybe for the average person to smell on you because it's not super funky and animalic and yet it's deep enough to maybe keep you interested because you're smelling all of this, all of these little slight nuances. But for me, I, I want the, I want the, you know, sledgehammer. I want the funk. I want the uh, I want the barnyard. I, I want it to be intense and all that good stuff. So uh, that's kind of my take. Let me know if you have experience with Jungle Kinam. Thank you again, Nissan, for sending this to me. This would not be possible uh, without your kindness. So I've been really enjoyed wearing this today, thanks to you. And I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. If you have experience with Jungle Kinam, uh, this is the Pure Parfum, by the way. I think they have a Eau de Parfum which I think I was reading the blurb from the Eau de Parfum, and they have a Pure Parfum. Uh, and so this is the Pure Parfum. But uh, but yes, if you have experience with Jungle Kinam, do let me know. Leave it in the comments. Let me know what you think of Ensar. Uh, let me know if your experience is different than mine. You know, again, I, I would love to own some of these, but the pricing is just outrageous. Uh, we will channel our inner rich Mitch and just say it is absolutely outrageous, his pricing. So uh, that's my take. Thanks for watching, everybody. An early impression video. It's been a while since we've done one of these. So cheers, guys. See you again later. Bye-bye.